Welcome back to Broken Electronics. I'm Lee, and it's wonderful you could spend some time with me here today. Uh, now, I, of course, want to fill up that time with a computer project. Behind me here, you see a Power Mac mirror drive door. This happens to be the dual 867 MHz PowerPC G4 configuration of that. Currently, this machine dual boots Leopard and Tiger. 10.5.8 and 10.4.11. Uh, 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 the Leopard installation is on a 512 gigabyte SSD. The Tiger installation is on the 80 gigabyte mechanical hard drive that came with the machine. And in fact, the seller had put on a clean installation of Tiger. Now, I've got a couple of things in mind. To reconfigure this machine. Uh, one, you never know what's going to happen with an ATA hard drive or ID, aka IDE hard drive. Uh, these are all old. You don't know how, how many cycles they've been through and they could give up at any time. It's still working now, so there you go. So my intention is to put in a 128 gigabyte SSD install Tiger and Mac OS 9 onto this SSD. Now, I could go to a bigger SSD, to be sure. The mirrored drive door is the first of the Power Macs that no longer had the 128 gigabyte drive limit. But for putting on Tiger and putting on uh, Mac OS 9, 128 gigabytes is going to be more than sufficient particularly with what's in there already. Now, th there's one other thing. Uh, I currently have that SSD with Leopard on it connected into the drive bay that is underneath the optical drives. We'll open it up and have a look in a minute. Uh, and I did that simply because it was much easier to get to. I have since learned many things. An, an interesting thing about this machine, it's got three separate ATA channels. One is ATA33 that connects the optical drive and the potential for a second drive underneath the optical drive. The place where the Leopard SSD is currently located is underneath the optical drives. That's ATA66 which is exactly what the, uh, the, the Sawtooth and the uh, Gigabit Ethernet, etc., all ran on ATA66. However, that third connection for ATA is ATA100. So what I intend to do is to connect this SSD to the remaining ATA100 spot and might as well just leave the mechanical hard drive in there with its 80 gigabytes. It's not hurting anything. Uh, all right. However, then I will have Tiger and OS 9 running at a faster speed than Leopard. That makes no sense. Enter. Yet another PCI SATA card. With this installed, I can run at SATA speed, SATA 1 admittedly, but it's a lot faster than ATA. I have the cables that will connect it, and I am simply going to take the uh, SSD that has Leopard on it, reconnect it so that we have a faster configuration. And we should end up with some substantial improvements to this machine. Well, I hope I'm going to find this fun to do and interesting, and I hope you're going to find it interesting too. And if you do, please stay tuned. All right, here we are. Open the machine up. This opens up really easily. All right, now, uh, this is a Firewire 800 card, which seems to work in this machine. So I have at least two that do. All right, now, this is the SSD. We'll disconnect that, get that out of there. Disconnect the adapter. 
doesn't appear to want to disconnect. There we go. And I actually got this plugged into the adapter. Yeah, I sure do. Okay, well, that's just as well. We'll get that out of the way and we'll deal with that later. Now, this is the cage for the hard drives. It's designed to have as many as four hard drives. Two over here, we'll get to that in a bit, and then two down in here. These are the ATA-66 connectors, and over here is ATA-100. All right, now, there's a screw holding this in place which apparently someone in the past has taken out because it isn't there anymore. Uh, you're probably not going to see. There's a little tab here. And if I press down, this whole thing will come out. That was this tab here. Press it down, and it releases and comes out. Now, I'm just going to leave this thing out because what we find in here, there are a lot of different connectors. Uh, different cables that have to go in. With all of these cables, it gets tough to cable manage and the cage just gets in the way. So, can you see over here? Yes. I'm going to try putting the PCI card here. Get that screw out. that goes. That was easy. Now, since I no longer need the floppy connector, I'll just put that aside. All right. Got that plugged in. Plug in one of the sound of power. All right. And where's our adapter here? Molex, uh, excuse me, sound of data there. Molex to sound of power. that. And that connection is made. We can just slide this in there. Now we need to reconnect. This is a Molex extender going into there, which we should be able to get into place pretty easily. Right, and that's really all there is to that. Oh, wrong <laughs> SSD. That's the 128 gig. Let's put the Leopard drive there because that's the one we want to be fastest there. That makes way more sense. Yeah, and that doesn't want to tuck out of the way very well. So we're going to have to be a little careful closing this. You just push it up, it'll go in there. All right. Now, we move you over to here. So you can see the rest of this process. This is the second IDE connector on the ID100. The first is already plugged into the spinning hard drive, which we're going to leave into place. Now, I'm going to simply leave this one in place. I am going to put an expender, extender, splitter extender. Uh, 
Come on, get on there. Okay, it is tight. It's, this is why I made the big mistake of connecting the leopard drive initially to the ATA 66 lane. It was just so much easier to get at and work with. There we go. Okay, that's in all the way. Now. We can plug power into the IDE to SATA adapter. Tuck that one in there. Probably not any real need for that. Now. Okay. This this is a pain. <laughs> Trying to get at it here. That plug in. That plugged in. All right, now. I gotta get the drive in there. Hello. And it can just sit right there. It'll be held pretty securely. The cage is going to keep that in. Uh, over here, we'll simply not have the cage. And that should make it a little easier. Okay. Once again, just want to double check. Yes, I did connect the Firewire 800 card. And I do have power connected for that. All right. We should be good. Okay, there we go. Well, now we're going to have to connect the thing up, boot it up, and make sure everything's working. Please, as always, stay tuned. All right, here we are connected. Let's power it up. Solid chime. It takes a while. I've got this connect the Apple Cinema display connected with the adapter. Actually, this would drive it directly, but since the display is plugged into the adapter, no reason not to. Okay, light just went on. It will need to find a bootable installation. It has found such. Booting to OS 10, which are the only options right now. Come on. Does take it a while. There we go. We get our progress spinning wheel. Okay. And we're in Leopard. Ah. Okay. This is the Existing mechanical hard drive, 80 gigabyte. Crucial is the boot drive. And this says test. I don't know why I gave it the name test, but that's the 128 gigabyte drive. All right. About this Mac. She is in fact dual 867 megahertz PowerPC G4. If I ever run across a, an upgrade for that, we may have a video on that. We'll see. It's a maxed out 2 gigabyte of DDR SD RAM and our startup disk. All right. Go to System Profiler. All the appropriate information. Expand that for you there. All right. Oh, yeah. So whenever the mouse moves, that moves. That's the optical drive. That's blank. This is the boot drive. 
Now, these are all, the, the SATA PCI card all reads as ATA, although it is going at SATA 1 speeds. So that's the PCI card. Now here we have the built-in. That's the 80 gigabyte spinning hard drive. And there's our SSD. Ah, and I notice there are no Mac OS 9 drivers, so I'm gonna to need to reboot that. All right, what else should we look at? You see disk burning. You know, original Apple Drive, it is a DVD reader, but will only write CDs. That is okay. I have plenty of machines that can burn DVDs. All right, graphics and displays. What's in here right now is an ATI Radeon 9000 Pro with 64 megabytes of video RAM. That's actually a very decent card for this machine. Uh, if I ever find another 128 megabyte card, we'll see if that you know, comes up. Uh, on five, well, no, let's look at PCI cards first. Here we see our SATA. And, you know, down here, driver installed. There's the FireWire card. Gives us no information about it. That's on slot 5. That is the FireWire 800 card. Uh, and USB controllers. Uh, it does have USB 2 on it. We can take a further look. Looking in FireWire, that's the card, 800. Then here's the built-in, uh, 400. The EyeSight uh, camera is, in fact, built into that. I don't know if I'm going to use it. All right, what else should we look at? Uh, USB, maybe. All right, USB bus. Okay, yes, these, these are... From the expansion slot, this is the built-in USB 1.1 uh, plugged into the studio display, a USB 2 device, that's actually the speaker, and then the hub in Apple Pro keyboard. The Apple Pro keyboard is plugged in, of course, as is the mouse. All right, now, the, the one thing I wasn't really expecting was to see no Mac OS 9 drivers. So we can uh, back out to normal view. Uh, so yeah, I wasn't really expecting that. Uh, so I think what I'm, what I'm gonna have to do with this will be to reformat that drive because that is the drive where I intend to have OS 9. And then install, I think I'll do a clean install of Tiger on that drive end up wiping the spinning hard drive uh, clean and it can just be extra storage uh, and there's some some tricks to installing Mac OS 9 on a Power Mac G4 MDD uh, might be I should take a look at that so I think I'm probably gonna make all of that into a separate video uh, and just leave this here here as it is. It's working. It's got all its drives. Uh, we should be in good shape with this machine. And uh, I've got a little series of videos planned in which this will be featured. Quit out system profiler. All right. So I think we are, in fact, pretty much done here. That being the case, be good to other people. Other people really deserve it and they need it, particularly in these times. Be good to yourselves. If you're not good to yourself, you're not going to enjoy this better world that we're in the process of making. It is not a better world yet. So please, take very, very good and careful care. So yeah, we've got one more video coming up on this MDD. I've got a series with uh, several G4s that's, that's going to pop up. Uh, and some other goodness coming up as well. So... Until all of those things are available for you to see, this has been Broken Electronics.